Hey everybody. hey everybody. Oh wait, let me put my let me put on my mic. Because y'all y'all have complained about the sound not being so so great. Is that does that sound okay? Can can you hear me? Am I am I coming in okay? Can you just give me a thumbs up that the sound is good? Hi. Yeah, sounds, sounds pretty good. good. There's not any weird feedback or anything. Can you hear Chef Jamie Lauren? Can you hear me? Because you're gonna need to hear what she has to say. She's gonna teach us how to make some really great stuff. Uh-oh. What? Wait, no? No? If I talk Joe? into here. What a <laughs> Joe, are you met? You can hear us both. Okay, great. Okay, great. So super. So Perfect. Chef Jamie, tell us. Tell us who you are and, and what you do. Um, well, hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Jamie. Uh, I am a chef. I've been a chef for a long, long time, like 20-something years. So many years. Yeah, a long time. And um, now I actually do a lot of like behind the scenes TV producing. Which is awesome. It's yeah, kind of like my favorite stuff. stuff. Yeah. So I work on a lot of cooking shows, but I also was a contestant on Top Chef. Top Chef. Right. And I've been doing all sorts of cooking stuff. And Master Chef. Yeah. Master Chef, Top Chef, I Top work, Chef yeah. Kids. Yeah. I work a lot with kids. All the Man vs. Child, all of these shows. Right. Yeah. All, so she's got, she's got some, she's got, oh, you love Lethal Seduction. That's, that's thank you. I've got to watch this Lethal so, Seduction. I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah. I've done some, a couple of, <laughs> couple of fun Lifetime movies. The kids seem to enjoy them. Um, but, uh, yeah. So what, I'm sorry. I got, I got sidetracked and, and, and that's what happens with this. You start reading and you're talking yeah. and then and next then, thing you know, yeah. you forget How do you it's even gone. Um, so what are we doing? So um, well, do you, well, you and I have cooked together yes. quite a few times. Here's the thing, and this is kind of funny because you guys know, the, the, the people that know my shows and know what I'm all about, I like to cook healthy. I'm always like doing the healthy thing. And sometimes people want to know like, you know, like what's your favorite meat? What's your favorite, you know, indulgence? What's your favorite, you know? Yeah. And I don't, re I don't really do that all that much. I mean, but occasionally I do. Anyway, Jamie being a real chef and using real butter <laughs> and real cream and real and cream real carbs and real, all, all of those things those delicious things that that normal people like to eat i mean even myself i like to eat i just you know i just choose to kind of limit it a little bit right. anyway so we had a conversation we said what can we do what can we do that's going to be healthy but but really delicious but and still has flavor and and that that can be easily made also for you guys if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and recreate this at home which hopefully you will so what are we doing so we're doing a play on this dish that was made famous by the chef of Nobu restaurant so Nobu Matsuhisa yeah Nobu is a um, it's a Japanese restaurant I think the first one was in Malibu or New York I don't know I'm yeah, not sure um, uh, I think it was on La Cienega I thought. Isn't that the original one, the small one? I don't know. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. know. If you can so Google it. He, <laughs> he sort of made famous this miso black cod. However, he's not the creator of it. He right. sort of made it famous in right. the U.S. So we're doing a version of it. Okay. Um, so what we have is I have some black cod, and the trick to it is making sure that the cod marinates for minimum of two days. Minimum. Minimum. So that's the only thing. So if you've got, if time is an issue, then you might not want to make this. Yeah. But if you want to impress your friends. But it's also relatives. one of those things that's, you know, maybe thinking ahead, like thinking, okay, I want to make this for dinner on Tuesday night. So right. I'm going to marinate it today and mm -hmm. then Tuesday it'll be ready to go. And so it's just thinking ahead and planning out your week a little right. bit. So tell me what's in the marinade. Okay. So the marinade is white miso. So it's important that you use the white miso because it's kind of the sweeter of the miso. Mm -hmm. So it's white miso. It's mirin sake and I do a little soy sauce in mine mm -hmm. uh, the Nobu's recipe actually calls for sugar I omitted it oh thank I you but you don't want the sugar I like to not have the and sugar yeah I actually don't find that it's necessary because the white miso is so it's sweet, so on sweet. Its own, right it doesn't need it and just so that you guys know the recipe will be up on my website I'm going to I'm gonna we're gonna write this all out for you so that uh, you know so we could talk about it right now we may not give the exact measurements and quantities but um, Rest assured, it will be up on the site. So, Double sugar. sugar. That's right. Exactly. Just put a ton of sugar on it and we're good. Just sprinkle everything with sugar so. and bacon. <laughs> Just sugar and bacon. What's nice about the miso is because it has its sugar in it, it does have some sugar in it, it has a natural sweetness to it, it caramelizes super nice. So mm. when you put this in the broiler, the fish comes out and it's like super caramelized and right. so delicious. I actually did a little taste test on Instagram. If you guys want to check it out, it's in my Instagram, in my Insta story. I did a little, because we just wanted to make sure that it was going to be, I needed to make sure it was going to be delicious. Jamie already knew, obviously, because she, because she, uh, I mean, I do, I have made it. it before. So this is it. It's ready to go. You can you see? see it. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna actually throw it into the toaster, believe it or not. A toaster oven. Um, which you is guys have a toaster. Everybody oven, has right? a toaster. 
Uh, so it's just going to go <laughs> this, in the okay. poster. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll address the apron no. comment if I remember it after we finish talking about this. I'm going to try. Um, um, on the broil function. That's broil. It. We're going to broil it for about how long? Right, it's going to take probably between five and ten minutes. Okay, so we'll we'll see. We're going to yeah. we're going to just we're smell it for now. I'm just going to stick it over there, and then and we're not going to forget about it. We're, we're going to start to do it. a couple of other things. This this um, this apron was a gift to me um, from from a wonderful girl named Rachel, and um, she's celebrating her twin birth her twin sister's birthday. Which I guess would mean it was her, it's her birthday also. So happy birthday, Rachel! <laughs> um, <laughs> she's not a, she's not able to to, uh, to be with us today, but but her apron is, and it's like you said, dope. What type of fish? The fish is it's black, black cod. cod. It's so black. also known as sable fish. So it's either if you see it in the store, it's sable fish and or black cod. And is is sable to have have the the black skin? Yeah, sable okay. is black cod. Oh. it's the same fish. So it's just a fancy way of saying exactly. sable. Exactly. Exactly. I guess. Yeah. Hi, Brian. So the thing with black cod, I think the reason why it works so well in this application is that it has so much fat in it. It's such a fatty, like rich fish. Mm, so it just like fat. lends to that miso marinade really well. Yeah. It's not the kind of fish you actually even want to sear because it doesn't, the skin doesn't get crispy. It's not that kind and of And it fish. doesn't really, and it doesn't even need to because right. the marinade is just, it's so good on it that you could, I mean, I would chew it as gum. Yeah. If, they had a, if they had a miso black cod chewing gum, I would probably chew it. I'm just saying. All right, so then maybe not, or maybe not. <laughs> okay. So by the way, hopefully this angle is good for you guys. I kind of mixed it up a little bit because I've had some requests because you guys want to see what we're doing, and um, being that I don't have a, a film crew and can only use my my iPad, uh, it's got to be high and far away. So it's kind of strange because you're, you know. They but like it. Oh, you like it. Awesome. Good. Okay, good. So you can see it. You can see us. We can hear. And I'm gonna get started on the really hard stuff. So Dina's going to use a mandolin, so don't try this at home if you don't know how to use them. They yeah. are kind of scary. Super sharp. I've sliced my, I've sliced some skin I've off of them. I've definitely sliced some skin some off skin. of them too. Yeah, yeah it's so. not fun. So it's just this little hand, little handheld mandolin. And uh, I'm going to just get started on, on doing this. Do, I, do you need a new room over no, here? No, no, no. So I'm just going to kind of explain what you're doing. Yes, so please. Basically what we're doing is we're making kind of a simple sort of Japanese-inspired cucumber salad. So we're going to just shave the cucumbers super thin. Uh, and then we're going to take some kosher salt. It's uh, really, really thin, guys. Like yeah, super, super thin. thin. Uh, and kosher salt is, to me as a chef, the only kind of salt that I'll cook with. I think most chefs would agree um, that, to yeah, that. Yeah, like this is it. Like you don't use iodized table salt. Like this is what you use. I have. You want to show it to them? The difference? Yeah, no, show them the salt. Because I mean, I have it. You can tell just by feeling it. You can tell by touching it. Yeah, it's, well, it's you coarse. Can see it. It's coarse, and that's why chefs like to cook with it because you can really get a feel for what the salt, you know, sort of feels like. Yeah. And you can also see how much you're seasoning. Right. And that's really important when you're cooking. If you're using like an iodized salt or a table salt, it's mm. too fine, and yeah. you tend to oversalt. Right. So what we're gonna do is once we're done cutting the cucumber, is we're gonna sprinkle it with the kosher salt, and we're gonna macerate the cucumber for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the reason we're doing that is to leach out some of the liquid from the cucumber. You do that with other, um, like eggplant, don't you do that with eggplant? Yeah, eggplant, you do it to take away the bitterness right. in the eggplant. Uh, but this is just to leach out some of the liquid and to sort of help break down the cellular structure of the cucumber and to add flavor, right? Right, because the salt is going to add flavor, obviously. Right. Um, so that's why we're going to do that. So we're going to let it sit probably about 10 minutes, and then while that sits, we're going to work on a vinaigrette, and we're going to cook some shishito peppers. We're going to do a bunch of other stuff. What's going to be in the vinaigrette? So Are we're going to do a vinaigrette. Um, we have a couple of things that we're doing. So we have the cucumber salad. We've got the fish. We've got some brown rice cooking in the back. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do some sauteed shishitos, which I'll get to in a second. And then we're going to do a sesame, ginger, garlic... Bro soy vinaigrette for the broccolini. Broccolini. Yeah, so we're going to make some broccolini with that vinaigrette. So what I have in this bowl is I have some um, ginger and garlic that I've already... <laughs> <laughs> that I've already... Gr I've grated this on a microplane, so I got it really nice and fine. Yeah, show them what a microplane is. For those of you that don't, don't know what a microplane is... This guy is a microplane. A little... So it's got super fine little holes, um, and it works great for ginger because it takes all the fibrous pieces of the ginger out, and you're just left with this like sort of beautifully smooth pieces of ginger. Right, garlic. just like a like a like a ginger puree, as exactly. opposed to having those like fine ginger hairs exactly. getting stuck. I also in. like to use this when I make like pasta and like sprinkle all sorts of parmesan. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. That's what I originally got it for. Yes, yeah, it's really great for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do a little bit of rice vinegar. So I'm gonna start with the rice vinegar just to kind of get. Also, this ginger and garlic kind of macerated in the rice vinegar. 
And that's I'm gonna, gonna be, I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing this for days. I'm, gonna be, I'm, I'm just. You're actually doing pretty good. Thanks. Look at oh that. God, they're beautiful. Look at all that cucumber. By the way, guys, if you didn't know, cucumber is a natural anti-inflammatory. So um, if on the odd occasion you're feeling a little inflamed, <laughs> eat some cucumber. We'll just put them on your eyes. I'll put it. Well, for it's sure, for put that. them on your eyes. Really good for puffiness on your face. Yeah. You can, yeah. I think there's a there's a little. Little spa in 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 I don't know, downtown or where they they take cr uh, frozen uh, crushed cucumbers and they just really? put it all over your face. I yeah, do that at home. Yeah, they that do sounds that. amazing. Yeah, I actually like drinking cucumbers. cucumber water a lot. So good. So, so I have the ginger, I have the yeah. garlic, I have the rice vinegar in here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of soy sauce. Yeah. So just a little bit, and just a note about soy sauce because I did notice this. Um, Dina actually pulled this out of her fridge. Soy sauce is one of those things, I think a lot of people don't know that, but it does store better in the fridge. Oh. Yeah. So I always keep my soy sauce in the fridge, too. So I think there's something that says that you should store that it you in the fridge. It, but a yeah, lot of people I don't. don't. Know. I can't even. A lot of people don't. I can't see this anymore. I need my glasses. But they don't. Yeah. They, they, they just keep, they just keep the it. It stays better if you store it in the fridge. Yeah. Um, so then I'm going to add, instead of adding sugar here, I'm going to do a little bit of agave. It's my favorite. So it's a healthier sweet sweetening substitute, I guess. It's my sweetener of choice. So I'm going to add a touch of that just to kind of balance out the vinegar and the um, soy. So because vinegar adds Get acid, all. soy adds a little acid, adds salt, but then the sweetness balances it all. So that's the thing with cooking is you really want to balance everything, right? It's yeah. all a balance. It's a balance game. Guys, I just want to go ahead and just say one thing. You got you you know that I'm you know, I'm usually the one that's cooking in my kitchen. This is this is really hard for me to give up the control and just kinda let Jamie take over. I just wanted to just let you know that <laughs> doing this, I feel like I should be doing so much more. It's just a guess. I really spot. should. Just a guess, but you'll get back to it. Uh, <laughs> but I felt that I could learn so much from Jamie, so I'm mm. just gonna let her do the talking. How are the brothers? They're good, Joe. They're good. I'm surprised Greg didn't like. I thought he might he might even show up. I haven't seen them in so long. In so long, like Those yeah, a while. Years. I'm down to my last. Oh my summer. god! I'm almost done. done. I'm almost, almost done. done. What am I going to do afterwards? All right. So the next thing I'm going to add to this vinaigrette is one of my favorite ingredients, and this is definitely one of those like chefy things. Um, you know, if you don't know about Japanese ingredients, this is something called yuzu koshu. So this is uh, made with a Japanese citrus called yuzu, which mm -hmm. is like a Japanese lemon. Right. And actually, we're going to use yuzu juice later, uh, so we're kind of using both parts of it. And green chilies and salt. So sort of like a fermented maceration of all of those things together, mm -hmm. and you end up with this like salty paste can that's I try delicious. It? Can I, can yeah. I see if it's going to be worth, worth our while? Too much for you. Might be, that might be a little. I'm just going to take a little. See what you think. Mmm, spicy, a little salt, salty, a little, a little bit of zing mm -hmm. from the from yeah. the yuzu. Super fragrant, right? So you get delicious. That, like, mm -hmm. yeah. You just put a little bit though because yeah, it's pretty strong. So it's a little bit in here. So if you know if you do and like people who'd be familiar with this or people who go out, I guess for a lot of sushi or Japanese. Yes, I was gonna uh, say I've had that before. So this is something that you'll see in a Japanese restaurant that might just be a little tiny dollop on top of a piece of really beautiful fatty fish or mm -hmm. something like that, or a scallop. Exactly. Or kiwi scallop. Yeah. Mmm. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of that in my dressing, just to add a little bit of that heat flavor and a little bit of Putting salt. it in, Dave. <laughs> Putting it in. Right. Dave's my friend. Oh, yeah? um, Dave's my friend in, in England. Yes, we met, we met years ago. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So now I've got pretty much all of my acids in here, right? But I haven't added the oil yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and stream a little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the toasted sesame oil. Yum. Right, because I want that like nutty sesame flavor. <laughs> You're I'm not gonna use too much of it. She likes them nutty. I like the nutty. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use too much of it because it can be kind of overpowering. overpowering yeah, right? yeah, yeah, just need a little. So I'm just gonna use a little bit, but now I've got this vinaigrette, but it doesn't have enough oil in it. Let's so put some salt on this, by the way. Oh yeah, you don't need to do that, put right? some salt on there. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, we gotta macerate those. Mm -hmm. Do I have to massage it? You sure do. Can I massage? I'm gonna massage. You gotta massage, massage the cucumbers. Yeah, really get in there. Massage them. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we're working this cucumber action. Oh yeah. A little bit more. Goodness. It's so fine. It's like paper thin. Mm-hmm. So to not overpower my dressing with too much oil or mm -hmm. sesame oil, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of avocado oil. Ah, okay. As well. 
So this is going to be, avocado oil is great. It's super neutral, mm -hmm. uh, has a high smoking point, so kind of like a grapeseed oil. The avocado oil is also very healthy. It it's is. All very, very, very healthy. It's, it's the good fat that you hear people talking so much about. So I'm going to go ahead and just whisk a little bit of that in there just to help sort of form a little bit more of a dressing. And then I'm going to taste this and see what this tastes like. Because you don't want to add all that vinaigrette to, you know, if it doesn't taste right, you want to kind of fix the seasoning and then before you add it to... Some green onion. 7,000 cucumbers. You can't have an Asian vinaigrette without green onion in it. You need green onion. So. All right. Mm. Can, I, can I stop this now? I think you can stop that now. Okay. This too needs... My hands have been thoroughly washed and are clean. I would not be salt. sticking dirty hands in my food ever. I'm going to just mm. go around the back. I'm not, I'm not on a wireless. <laughs> I'm not on a wireless. It tastes pretty good to me. Tastes good? Yeah. Can I try? Yeah. Oh, I need a, I need a, I need a, so I need a rag. So this is actually the dressing that's going to go on our broccolini. Oh, I thought this was the one that was going to mm -hmm. go on the... Yeah. Oh! Good? Good, yeah. All right. It's really good. Really good. A little, little sweet, little nutty, little, little uh, heat. Mm-hmm. A little onion. Yeah. You know what that would be really good on? That would be a great um, gyoza. Dipping sauce? Yeah, dipping yeah, sauce for, for those Japanese. It'll be great um, on that too, though. Well, yeah, same thing. I'm so just, let's I'm see just what these taste like. Very good. So, I'm good. I'm glad you like it, Joe. I always like to um, taste a cucumber after I've added salt to it, just to see if it has enough. Yeah. Which it does. So now we're just going to let this sit for a little bit. And then you'll and start then, to see that the water is there. And then we're going to squeeze them out. Yeah, because you can already see that there's a lot of water yep. um, happening. Yeah, and this is actually a really good way to make pickles, too. Like, if you ever want to make pickles. Right. Like, like, like you do. I mean, like, sometimes you just go, I don't know what, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I think I want to make some pickles. I, chef people want to make pickles. I know. you, Sunday And you like to do a lot of pickling things, <laughs> do, don't you? Yes. You do a lot of, like, pickled onions. I do a lot of pickles. Right? I do a lot of pickles, everything. I don't, yeah. You're going to have to tell me how to do that, because I've never done it. Pickling is a complete, completely foreign thing to me. So. Anyway. Now. What's next? Oh. We're going to move on to shishito peppers. Shishito peppers. Which, if you guys um, have ever been to a Japanese restaurant, they usually saute these. Sometimes, they're, sometimes they can be deep fried, mm -hmm. deep fried, and then they've got some... some I, I feel like a lot of times they're deep fried. First, yeah. at least. I prefer to just saute them because yeah. it, it, it's a healthier way of doing it, so you're not putting them in a vat of oil. We like how they... Um, how She'd like to know, uh, Becky, is that Becky? Yeah, Becky would like to know how spicy they are. Okay, so here's the thing with shishitos. <laughs> it's like one in ten. Hit or hot. miss. So you never know if you're going to get a hot one. And sometimes you don't get hot ones at all, and sometimes you get a lot of hot ones. Right. So it's sort of like playing Russian roulette with yeah. your food, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Yeah, you um, never really know. They're super delicious. They're Japanese pepper. Um, they've become very in vogue. They're very trendy. In restaurants, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to sear them over really high heat. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to it while it's searing, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to add that yuzu that I was talking about before. So this is yuzu juice. Does this go bad? Uh, you have to keep this in the fridge. I, so I, I can, know, because I think I, I had a bottle that you yeah. gave me years ago, and I think I had it in the refrigerator for years, Yeah. and then I tasted it, and it really well, kind of, yeah, that's they it. They have expiration dates on them. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> mine was <laughs> like, I think it was like 2012 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and it, I, it will eventually go bad. Yeah, it's, it's like, a, it's like it a lemon did. juice. Yes, but isn't citric acid something like a preservative, like a natural yeah, but preservative? but I don't think this has citric acid in it. I think no, but it is citric acid. I know it I mean, is, but I don't think it lasts forever. I don't think so either, because it tasted like crap. Yeah, so then I've got another <laughs> spice, um, or oh, another fun ingredient. This, this is something called togarashi. Have Which I, togarashi no, before? I don't think so. So togarashi is a, it's like a Japanese five spice. So it's like orange peel, chili flake, okay. sesame seed. Um, there's a couple other things in there that I'm not sure what they are, but okay. this is used a lot in Japanese. Where cooking. where could the, the fine people that are watching us get something like that? Do they have to go to a Japanese Here's market? Here's the beauty of Amazon. Yeah. You can get anything on Amazon. Oh, yeah. so right. Amazon sells this. Amazon sells this. Mm -hmm. Amazon sells a lot of this stuff. Right. So if you don't live somewhere near an Asian market, you can just go to Amazon right. okay. and order it well, online. Uh, but pretty much any Japanese market mm -hmm. would have these products. Hi, Landy. So, uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get my pan nice and hot. So on our inductions, let's make, make a little bit of noise. Yeah, sorry, guys. This is We wanted to um, be able to cook a saute for you over here okay. because my, my stove is over yonder. Showing the labels. Yeah. 
It's yes, it's Sashimi Togarashi. Exactly. There you That's go. That's exactly what it is. Why wouldn't you want to look into my fridge? <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, evil doctor. Yeah, fun, <laughs> really fun, fun character to play. Um, so anyway, we we decided to do uh, to to work on the induction burner here uh, because it's too far to. It's too far. It's like 15 feet, and you'd never you'd never be able to see Jamie cooking. So we we figured we'd do it all right here. Make it all make it all uh, easy easy. So I used to do a dish really similar to this in a restaurant that I worked at, actually, in the, on the west side. Uh, but we would do it with edamame. Mm -hmm. so we would do whole edamame pods. So right. if you don't like shishito peppers or scared of spice, yep. you could totally do this exact same thing with edamame. Okay, great. And it comes out great. Uh, so we let this pan get nice and hot. And I want to see some, you know, I want to see a little bit of smoke coming off of it. I want to see the sort of lines in the pan that the oil makes. I'm right. seeing the same avocado oil for the high heat right. searing. Also, um, I don't, I, I've always heard, uh, I'd say I'm already starting to see the mm -hmm. lines. Normally the, what you want to do is you want to get that pan good and hot before you even p turn on the, uh, before you even put the oil. Yes. Right? Because you don't want to like warm up the oil in the pan because it yeah. might start to, start to taste weird. So wait till the pan gets nice and hot and, um, and then add, and then add the oil. We're not there, but it's almost. They, almost. It's starting. Yeah, it's we're almost. starting to see some lines. Um, so we got this and this, and then our shishitos and a little bit of soy as well. And that's everything that's going to go into this. Into the shishitos. Uh -huh. When should we put the fish in? That's only going to take about you said five to ten minutes. And we still maybe when we do the broccolini. Yeah, I think when we do the broccolini, this can just sit for a little bit, so we'll be okay. Also, um, regarding rice, I don't know about uh, you guys or how you make rice. Sometimes it can be, you know, strange making, and I think I, I don't, I don't think I've ever had good luck making rice using the directions that are given on the bag on the stove top. Like when I when I try to make rice on the stove, it always comes out Disaster. right. Always. I mean, it, I think they always tell you to use too much water. Mm -hmm. And it always becomes uh, like it's it I just gets it's overdone just the, I think it's or the way that it cooks, you know. I think it's just the how the heat is right. hitting the rice or something. Right. For me, it's always kind of a disaster. It can be a disaster too. Right? So, go ahead. Can you hold this for me for a second because I want to just go over there. Yeah. The beauty of a rice cooker. The beauty of a rice cooker. So I think I was on location. I think I was on location um, when I got this. Here, I'll go ahead and put that back on so you can hear me. So um, I I have this little rice cooker that I, I think I got it at like a Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid or some kind of uh, some kind of convenient uh, drugstore-ish pharmacy place where they have certain household items. I think I paid like 13 bucks for it. I think there might even be some supermarkets that carry them. Um, but if you don't have a rice maker, you should definitely get one because it really just <laughs> it just makes it so much easier to to, to make the rice uh, come you out. You can forget about it too. You don't have to worry about it. Right. It like takes all the thinking and the hassle away. Right. The yeah. measurement they give it gives you the cup. You mm -hmm. you set to the line and and what we did um, how we made this is uh, I used uh, per per Jamie's recommendation uh, we put a little coconut oil in there and a little bit of chicken bouillon to give it a little bit of flavor, yeah. which is really nice. And it makes the rice taste really good. Yeah, if you want to just... Uh, this is just brown rice. Yeah, what's cool, the two, is you can put all sorts of aromatics into a rice cooker. So, like, you could put lemongrass in there, kaffir lime in there, right. you know, garlic, shallot. Is that a clean spoon? Um, Cleanish? Cleanish. <laughs> did, we, did we put this in our mouth yet? No, we're not, the other end. The other end we did? Yeah. This one, this side we didn't. No. Because you don't want to taste and keep going back. You want to get like new spoons and stuff. But I'm just going to, yeah, do it. You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm right. just going to try the rice. Oh, and here comes the, the fry. But this is just brown rice. And again, a little bit of coconut, a little bit of chicken flavor. And brown rice is definitely the healthier of the options when it comes right. to rice. Because it has the hull on it and uh, that's fiber. So you got to break that down and uh, any carb that you're going to ingest, you you want to look for you want to look for a carb that's got some fiber that's doing something for good for you. Yeah. You know you don't want to just you don't want to just like eat paste because paste in the digestive tract it's not so good. It's not good. Somebody so. asked if uh, we make tofu. I love tofu. Yeah. I don't know. You're such a fan. I don't. Right? I don't mind. I don't mind it. It's not I something that it. I. You know, I'm not like, hey. I cook a lot of it. See, actually, I think you actually wanted. 
Sorry, is that getting too loud? Is that okay? I wanted to make tofu. Come speak, speak into the mic because it's all splattery over there. No, it's loud. Yes, yeah, she did ask if, if we would, uh, if I wanted tofu. to make tofu. Yeah. And I don't think I said no, but I just thought that there were other options that may have been yeah. a little bit more interesting. Wow, they're starting to blister. Yep. Guys. Nice. So that's the cool thing about doing them in a really hot pan, is you're still going to get that effect. That yeah. That blister thing that you would get if you fried them, yeah. you still get them in the pan. Love you it. You need to go fry them. And that's just, you just put oil, just a little bit of avocado oil. avocado oil right now. Do you season with salt? I haven't done anything Not yet. Not yet. I'm going to let it get some color. Come on. And then I'm going to start seasoning with all of these things. Somebody asked if I fried tofu. <laughs> um, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of fried tofu. I actually prefer it like cold and fresh. Yep. With uh, with actually with that yuzu koshu on it. But agadashi it's tofu is oh, delicious. delicious. But that's very lightly fried. Yeah. Yeah. They do that. What is it? Is it like a tempura it's batter uh, or something? I think cornstarch actually. It's fantastic. That's fantastic. And then and the broth. So good. It's great. Yeah. Hey, there's a lot of water accumulating at the bottom of this. Yeah, it's great. Oh, right. Yeah, we could probably squeeze those pretty soon, I would imagine. Look at the peppers. Can you guys see them? Yeah. Getting all that nice there you go. color on them. Smells so good. So now mm. that I'm starting to get that sear, I'm going to go ahead and add some garlic to it. Right, because if you add the garlic too early, what happens? It would burn. It would burn and it would make yeah. it not taste good exactly. at all. Exactly. The garlic's going to go in. And then I'm going to sprinkle, actually I'm going to hold off on the togarashi for a second. And I am going to hit it with a little bit of salt. Now. And then, once the garlic starts to get sort of aromatic, you can smell it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw that yuzu in there. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the yuzu is going to kind of stop the garlic from getting too brown. It's going to sort of cut the cooking a little bit. Right, almost like steam it. Or and a little bit of soy. And this is going to help kind of deglaze it. Mm -hmm. And then... Butter. A little butter. A little butter. Letting yeah. me use butter. I'm letting her use whatever she wants today because this is a special occasion. I'm giving her free reign. So the butter is going to combine with the yuzu and the soy sauce and sort of create a nice glaze to right. go on top of the fajita. And now I'm going to sprinkle with the shogarashi. That's pretty much it. Do we leave them on there or are we going to... We're going to need the burner soon. We could actually put yeah, it... I'm just going to put them over there. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to see what it tastes like. Get an idea. Should I go milk the cucumbers? Yeah, we're ready. Is As it so safe much safe on the counter? Uh, I Hot. think I think so. Marble, it, right? it should be. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Should be all right. All right. And Guys, now I think it's time to throw. Do the you see how much? Do you see how much water is in there? So much. And that will make a salad really watery and mushy, so you kind of want to get rid of that. What kind of Japanese mushrooms have we heard of? What kind of I've heard of a lot. Have you heard of any? I mean, I've heard of some, but There's like you the probably know better. There's mushrooms. I'm going to go around you. Mushrooms. Yeah. Let me switch with you. Enoki mushrooms. I don't like, I'm not really a fan of the enokis. Me either. I'm not a big fan. Me either. Mm -mm. So we're going to squeeze out the liquid from the cucumber, and then we're going to go ahead and season that with a little bit of rice vinegar and some uh, sesame oil and some soy sauce. Yeah, give it a nice good squeeze. So mm. what's cool about this is they're like super pretty, right? Mm -hmm. no? Like they're all like nice and broken down and mm -hmm. soft, but they still have texture. Yeah. But they've broken down a little bit. So we use Persian cucumbers, by the way. I'm, I'm yeah, I prefer Persian cucumber. They're sweeter. They, they are, and they, I like the texture of them a Agreed. lot better. Me too. So I'm gonna just a little bit of sesame oil over these. Again, we'll um, we just you know we kind of just go by eye, but we'll uh, we'll write up a recipe so that you guys can can do it. We'll do a little green onion in there as well. Mm-hmm. 
And, and that's the whites, or that's the... That's just like the whites and a little bit of the green. A little bit of the green. But the shorter, the I mean, like the bottom part of the green onion. Yeah, sesame seeds. I mean, just like that, you can just see how pretty it is. And then it, you know, needs a little bit of acid, so it's a little bit of rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of this salad is it should be very, very light. Like, this is not something that's, like, tossed in a lot of stuff. It's yeah. sort of very simple. It actually does need a, a pinch more of salt. Salt. Um, and then... Just take a spoon and get in there and then see if it needs to be adjusted. Now there's like Thai um, cucumber salads that they make that have, a, uh, they're heavy on the sugar, you know? Yeah. Um, the Japanese ones aren't. They're not as heavy on the sugar. I'm sure that a lot of people are probably familiar with that Thai cucumber salad that like big Thai restaurant and it's like the, thai, the, the cucumbers, the red onions, the carrot, mm -hmm. and then it has like a very sweet yeah. dressing on it because that's like equal parts sugar and vinegar. That's right. why it's so sweet. You find that with most with most like Thai and Chinese food also there's yeah. a lot there's, there's a lot, a lot more of sugar happening. A lot of sugar, a lot of salt. Yeah. A lot of bloat in the face. <laughs> a lot of bloat. I can always tell when I've had Chinese food the next morning because my face is like bloated. And my eyes are puffy. Well, it's also the salt too. Oh yeah, yeah all of it. So of that so that would be a good time so to eat the cucumber salad, salad because of the anti inflammatory uh, qualities. Can you use couscous instead? I mean, you can. Um, you can definitely use couscous. It's sort of a, a different continent. Yeah, uh, it's more Mediterranean. It's definitely more Mediterranean, but I can't see why it wouldn't be delicious. I mean, quinoa would also be delicious mm -hmm. with this. You know, all of those sort of healthy kind of grains. Um, I really like a grain called farro. I love farro. So farro even could work. But I like to keep it traditional, like with right. this. Like that's yeah. where we're going with the, the brown rice, is keeping it really traditional. I mean, we could have gone like sticky white, but that just wouldn't be as healthy. And mm -hmm. we just, I mean, you know, we just kind of like we can do it, but I just I like to just, you know, I, I like to make it healthy when I can without uh, sacrificing too much of the cuisine flavor. So to me, this tastes pretty good. I mean, it's very, very simple. Can you see what you think? Needs anything else? But the point is for it to be very simple like that. It's delicious. No, yeah. it's delicious. I think I'm used to it. With a little bit more sweetness. Yeah. Um, I I mean, you don't have to. But we could add it. No, but I but it doesn't need it. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm just saying, like what I, you know, what I'm used to. Yeah, that salad is usually very sweet. It's very sweet. Yeah. Um, that little bit of the little bit of cucumber salad that they give you at you know, when you go for sushi or whatever, yeah. wherever. It does usually have a lot of white sugar. In mm hmm it. That's what's in it. And we don't want the refined sugar. So, that's delicious. So we do actually. Put that over there. Okay. I'm gonna put the shishitos in here. That's really, really fantastic. Pile these guys up in this bowl here. I think I double dipped. I think I used the same fork and I went back in there. Oh no. I'm gonna get my cooties. I don't want to share your germs. <laughs> I mean, who would? <laughs> don't answer that. All right. So our shishitos are here. Did you try one yet? I haven't yet. Shishitos look fantastic. Pretty. Yeah, Janice, we're gonna we're gonna find. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna get a hot one. Can I go in? Yeah, go in. I'm going in. See how they are. These are some giant shishitos. They're, they're really big. They're usually a lot smaller at a restaurant. Um, at the restaurant, but. Just kidding. Just kidding. No. Why are you? You did get no. me. I didn't get a hot one either. No. No. But a little bit. There's a little bit. Of, there's a little bit of kick. Mm hmm That user really has a nice kind oh. of... Oh! No! Nice you know what that is? Do you hear some... It's a weird interference? I think it's that. Can we, yeah, it's not... Oh, sorry guys. Uh, it's that damn thing. It makes a lot of... It makes a lot of noise. Um, I mean, I guess I can disconnect the mic. That might be better. For now. I'm gonna see if I can just can stop. You guys are still hearing it because I, yeah, I hear it all. So let me let me. Somebody says better. Becky yeah. says better. Better. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, because it's kind of weird here. Also, I've never I've never used this before, and um, I was kind of surprised when I heard how loud it was and how there was that weird high pitched. Yes. Yeah, it is.
Okay. So we'll just, so we just we won't use the mic right now. Um, and when we're done with that, then I can plug back in and hopefully it'll be better. Does it sound better? Does the does the does the sound sound better this way? Tell me if it sounds better. Because I'll just keep the mic off and we'll just do it like this. We'll go off that mic. Just say yes or no. Yes, better or no? <laughs> better now. Okay. Cool. Okay. Perfect. All right. And yes, I do think the recipe would work with uh, brown rice. I mean, sorry, with wild rice. I think it would be great. So what we have here, um, this is broccolini. So, baby, baby broccoli. Yeah, I went ahead and I blanched this earlier. Basically what that means is I cooked it uh, for a couple of minutes in boiling salted water, and then I shocked it in an ice bath to stop it from cooking, because I knew it was gonna cook it again. Right, basically for about five minutes, and you can do that with regular broccoli. I do it with regular broccoli, um, just to get a nice, vibrant green. Mm -hmm. And um, and then like, like Jamie said, you shock it in some ice water to stop the cooking, and, and then you're just left with yummy. So you can eat it like this. Yeah, it's totally delicious. It's fine. But I want to get a little bit of sear on it. It's so totally fine. A little bit of sear. So here we go. I'm going to go into a really hot smoking pan. Okay. And this is just going to change the texture of it too, just a little bit. It's going to give it a little crispiness, you know? I, I like to sear everything. All of my vegetables. I like a little bit of char on it. I like that little bit of, like again you say, a little bit of color. A little bit of color. I like the little burnt bits. Um, yeah, I like I like the little burnt bits. Thank you. Right? I've actually started um, roasting my broccoli. It's delicious like that. I love it. I just roast. I'll just roast broccoli at like 425. Uh -huh. 425. 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes on a baking sheet. That's great. It's so good. And get those little like. Sorry. Well, I'm not going to mess with it too much. Okay. Like, I don't. You, you notice I'm not like flipping it and doing crazy. Right. I'm trying to let it sear. Right. I'm trying to let it get some color. That's why I'm not going crazy with it. Yeah, a mistake that a lot of people make is that they just they start stirring as soon as it gets in the pot, and then it doesn't get the, the color. The so, peppers were called shishito peppers. Shishito. This is, isn't this awesome? This is um, the Punisher, right? Isn't it the Punisher? I think it's the Punisher. Yes, thank you, thank you, Rachel, for, for this awesome gift. Look at that. Look at that. I want to get it in my belly. Beautiful color now happening yes. on this broccoli. That nice char. So like other vegetables that work really well with this, like a Brussels sprout, mm -hmm. cauliflower, mm -hmm. cabbage. Anything that's sort of in that like cabbage. Cabbage. Like, cabbage. Like, cabbage. Like, cabbage. like this. Like, so do you see it? Chop like, it up. Chop it up into like oh, 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 I've never done like that. Yeah. So with garlic and cabbage. I do onions and garlic with it. Onion and garlic. Any, and anything else? This little oil on your garlic? Yeah. Never done it. Would never have thought to do it. It's so good. When you think green cabbage, you think boiled, right? I think a lot of people think boiled cabbage. Green. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll just, I'll just well, they're all in the same family. Right. So right. they all get that. They all caramelize really nice. Mm -hmm. They all like take on that like sort of popcorn kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like my Brussels sprouts too. Right. right. Cabbage is the same thing. I'm gonna try cabbage. I'm gonna have to try cabbage. It smells so good. It smells so good. How long does the rice cook? The rice, I think it depends on the kind of rice, but um, generally speaking, brown An rice hour. takes about 45 minutes, I think. It's probably about the same amount of time it would take on the show, but for whatever reason, it just cooks better in, in the rice cooker. So I, I think it's worth the $13 investment or the $15 investment. You can, like uh, James said, <laughs> Amazon has everything. Um, true. Um, but like, I, How's, well, that's that. How's the fish? I just checked it. I just turned it around, mm -hmm. and it's almost ready. Very excited. So now that our broccolini is here, I'm going to take this dressing while it's hot, and I'm going to kind of drizzle this over. And this dressing is going to sort of, you know, get really soaked into that into the broccoli. Why is it better to do it when it's hot? Because it's just I don't know. For okay. whatever reason, it's hot. It just absorbs course. things better. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure a thousand reasons why, but. It just tastes better. How little, I wonder how little sliced almonds would be in that. Be nice. Like a little almond yeah, bean. Maybe a little, nice. little bit of crunch, a little bit, little texture. What do you think? I have some. Yeah, what's happening? I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to get some sliced almonds. I think that's good. I think it would be great in here. Yeah, I think a little bit of, I think that little bit of crunch, that little texture is mm. nice. That dressing is so good on this broccoli. Um, I think the slice, the slice, not the, not the No, those, those, for sure. 
Yeah. Almonds are also very, very healthy for almonds do almonds make everybody and everything better. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle in here, okay? Yeah, I think it'll be great on there. Agreed. And besides, you know, we did the um we have the sesame seeds in the other. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, it's really delicious. I think it's a great. Oh my god, it delicious. smells so good. It see, I, see really that's good. that's I just thought of that. Because that's what happens. You start to smell things and when you spend a lot of time in the kitchen, like I do, I mean I'm no I'm no chef Jean Warren, but um, you guys know I have a passion for cooking. And even more so, I have a passion for eating. So and you, 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 just, you can just play with certain things. And what I like to do sometimes, I don't know if you do this, Jamie, but when you're trying something for the first time, when you're like, mm -hmm. oh, don't put that on your little bird. Um, but when you're trying something, you're like, I don't know, maybe this would be good. It seems like it would be good. Do you, do you take like a small bowl and take some of this stuff, whether it's a stew or a, so a sauce, or and like put it into something small and try whatever it is in a small amount? Of course. Yeah. See, that's what you gotta do, guys. Before you go, oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put some hot sauce in this because I think it would taste good. You could, you could ruin the whole thing. Take a little out. Is cabbage soup good for you? Of course it is. Unless it has a lot of cream in it. Unless it has a lot of cream in it. But I don't know. I never then, make cabbage soup. But cabbage is really good for it you. It is. Yeah, it's really um, good. I don't know how good it is for the people around you after you <laughs> eat it. But uh, cabbage is really good. And um, anyway, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's good to just, if you want to try something new, just uh, put, uh, put something in a small... Oh, sorry, I gotta let my dog out. Um, <laughs> it's it's black cod or sable. Yes, yeah, black cod. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab our plate. The dog is out. And oh, and all right. Let me do this. For the fancy chef tricks. Oh my god, the fish looks so good. Should we show them? No, I don't want to. We don't have to show them. We we'll just plate it. I'm not show them too. I'll show. It's hot though. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need to get my. Did you get my <laughs> my disgusting? I don't think we need all. I'll admit. No, no, no. I just, just, I'm just doing this for comedic. Oh, okay. For comedy, because like <laughs> these giant myths. They've got the cutest little silicone things now, right? But I'm like, what? Give me the big. I just, I just can't throw them out. So okay, I probably you so There you go. So guys, there. That's the black cod miso. Miso black cod. It smells. Divine. I'm not checking a horse. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> um, that looks really, really good. Okay. okay. And why? Why is it uh, cut like this? Is it, uh, yeah. Well, the thing is with black cod is it's uh, so it's a round fish. Um, you know, there's round fish and then there's flat fish. So like a halibut is a flat fish or a sole is a flat fish. Cod is in the round fish family. Okay. So the fillets on the cod that I purchased, this was like a three-ish pound fish mm -hmm. so it was it was about you know about yay big but once you get it off the bone and you fillet it right um cod has a series of bones that pretty much runs down like the kind of center of the fish it just ruin your world so instead of cooking it like that i just cut them out so that's why i ended up with these sort of small kind of random little pieces because i had to cut around those bones right. okay well there you go so and there's why. the explanation so, little chef trick. <laughs> um, I'm using this little cup I actually found in Dina's kitchen, or a ring mold also works. But I think I use that to measure the rice. That's what came with the rice cooker. You know, look at how cute that is. Look nice, Jersey. Nice. You got a little See, I circle. Don't, I don't know how to plate for anything. I'm so bad. So, so chef, chef, show me, show me how to plate some good stuff, and then I can put it on my. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit picture. of this. Broccoli. You kind of just sort of have it hang out by the rice. And make it so they can see it when I show the camera. I'll hold it. And then we're going to drizzle with some of that delicious dressing. Dressing is so good. So my cleaning assistant. Yeah, no, no problem. This is so hard for me. So one of the things that is, um, you know, nice when you're plating, you notice how I put all the broccoli the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have some that face one way and then some that face the other. So it's not all like, just, just makes it symmetry. Look, it just makes it look neater and nicer. Mm -hmm. Let's get some of those almonds on there so we can see them. Then we take the fish. If you want to maybe so good. Here, you can go see it. I think. Yeah, you guys can still see that. I could turn. You gonna do a little? You gonna do a work on top? So that's it there, and I think we'll even go. Just like that. Mm. And then, can you do a little drizzle or something? Or, or? 
Well, I cut really these beautiful. really beautiful scallions earlier. Like, like hair. Like how they do actually in the Japanese restaurants. So do a little bit of that on top. And we actually might take a little bit of this dressing. Just kind of dribble that around. You know, just to get a little bit on the fish and a little bit on the rice. Yeah. And then we have our fish. Oops. Always a chef, got to clean everything. Mm -hmm. Very important. So can you guys see that? There we go. That looks amazing. And now I'll take, I'm going to take a picture of this and you're going to see it on my website when I post the video. I'll just take this picture like that. Hopefully it'll, oh wow, it looks so pretty. It does look pretty in your picture. There it is. All right, so, so now if I was going to serve it, I would just take a little bit of my cucumber. I'm going to take my shishitos. These are sort of my little side dishes to go with it. I would probably even do a little bit of this on the cucumber just to make it look nicer. It smells delicious also. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I have a real camera. It's just easier to do things on my phone. Come on. So that's all plated. Don't judge me. Yes, yeah, so we're going we are going to post the instructions. A small little dance. Small dance. Oh, you guys like the dancing thing. <laughs> you know, I post all my dance. My little, when oh, I go, yeah, when I go, go to the gym. Dancing. Right. When I go to the gym and I do my little dance. Yes. Of course. And uh yeah, so that's kind of it, huh? Yeah. Did so you make it super did you, healthy? Did you make any for yourself? Because I mean, not yours. this is, I was looking at all that too. I'm looking, yeah. I, I will just take, get into this. It looks fantastic. Oh, wait, I should, I want to take pictures. I know, you guys do a photo. You gotta take pictures. Because I'm gonna, I'm totally gonna get into, oh, wait, I can just get into this. And I don't, I want there myself. Do you guys have any questions about uh, the process? Yeah, or the, the food or anything? But why don't you send me a good camera? There, the hot shot. Well, send me a camera. <laughs> I'll use any camera you want. Just, uh, just send it my way. That's the better angle. And it's hard. It's hard to upload things. I mean, when you're yes. using regular cameras. I mean, I, mean, I don't true. even know. I don't know. I don't even know how to use a regular I'm camera. Barely, I'm, I'm barely being. I'm That's barely funny. able to keep up with all the social media right now, guys. Mm. Yeah. I'm just gonna eat this. Good. We have that little one. And I like this big one. So, I think that's it. I think we're good. Um, sorry, do we miss any questions? No? Good trip, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, everything's delicious. Um, thank you, Jamie, for showing me how to make this. You're welcome. We're gonna, we have to go and you gotta eat it. Now. Well, we're going to eat it first. Yes. And now we're going to go right at the recipe. Exactly. And then later on this week, we will have it posted on my website. And um, maybe your website. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Chef Jamie Lauren, you have a you have a website. Chef Jamie I do. Lauren. Yeah, it's uh, Chef Jamie Lauren dot com. And you're on Instagram and Chef Jamie Lauren. Chef Jamie all Lauren. Of Instagram, all day long. Twitter, all of that stuff. All day long. You guys yeah. know you can follow me. Um, I'm on pretty much everything. Dina Meyer dot com is my website, where all the food and and uh, recipes and and videos are posted. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. All of it. It's everywhere. Dina Meyer all day. And um, thank you guys for joining us. I hope this was fun Thanks, for guys. you. Hopefully you'll try making it too. And we're gonna, yeah, hopefully you will. And then you can send us the pictures with your good camera. <laughs> <laughs>